Hi, my name's Alan Sands, and I'm standing outside the BD Biodiversity Museum at the University of British Columbia. Welcome to the Global Politics Instructional Video Series. In this series, we're looking at a series of questions, concepts, issues relevant to the study of international relations and global politics. And today, we are looking at the prisoner's dilemma. Now, prisoner's dilemma is really interesting. It's a branch of game theory. And game theory has its origins in mathematics, and we don't normally associate global politics with mathematics. But in this respect, it's actually very important. What game theory is all about is modeling behavior, modeling the behavior of actors, individuals, groups, and states. And what we're really interested in with respect to game theory is that what it does is provides us an idea of how decisions by different actors interact with one another. The decisions I make, along with the decisions someone else makes, can actually start to determine outcomes, and game theory can model this for us. Now, Prisoner's Dilemma is a really good example of this, and we use it quite a bit in international relations. The basic concept of Prisoner's Dilemma is that it is possible for two actors, even if they completely understand what the best outcome for them might be, might actually choose a different course of action. In other words, they might actually choose an action that they know isn't their best option available to them. And this gives us some insight as to why, for example, in global politics, we might not have climate change treaties signed. We might not have arms control agreements signed. We might not have trade agreements signed. It seems to benefit everybody, so why aren't we getting these types of outcomes? Prisoner's Dilemma gives us an insight into this question. So let's have a look. Prisoner's Dilemma. Prisoner's Dilemma is a two-person game. And it describes a situation facing two prisoners captured by the police. Prisoner A and Prisoner B. And Prisoner A and Prisoner B are captured by the police while committing an armed robbery. And after they're captured, they are placed in separate cells. And they cannot communicate with one another. Now, police have insufficient evidence to prosecute both of them for armed robbery. And as a result, they require a confession from one of them or both of them in order to prosecute for that crime. Otherwise, all they can do is bring weapons possession charges against both prisoners, and those charges carry a lesser sentence. So the police offer both prisoners a deal. And this deal creates a dilemma for the prisoners. Do they trust one another and stay silent and not give the police what they need to prosecute for the crime of armed robbery? Or do they confess, in effect, defecting from their cooperation in order to achieve their own personal uh, uh, gains? Now, the whole idea of the prisoner's dilemma is that the situation creates pressure on the prisoners to take a course of action that isn't necessarily the best course of action for them. And here's what I mean by that. So let's start with prisoner A. So the police go into prisoner A's cell and they say, look, um, we want you to confess to this crime. And if you do confess to the crime, which carries a sentence of 10 years, we will let you go free in return for your confession. But your partner, if they stay silent, will then take the entire sentence of 10 years. Similarly, the police go to prisoner B, and they basically say the same thing. They say, look, uh, prisoner B, if you confess to the crime, we will let you go free. And if your partner stays silent, they will take the full penalty. A sentence of 10 years. If both prisoners confess 
the police tell them. They will split the sentence. And each will go to prison for five years. Half of the 10-year sentence for armed robbery. But remember, if both prisoners stay silent, the police don't have enough evidence to prosecute them for armed robbery. They can only prosecute them for weapons possession charges, and those charges would result in a penalty of one year for each prisoner. And what this dilemma does, it creates a very interesting situation for both prisoner A and prisoner B, who, remember, can't communicate. Essentially, it boils down to trust. Does prisoner A trust prisoner B enough to stay silent? Does prisoner B trust prisoner A enough to stay silent? Because if they both stay silent, they will only receive a one-year penalty for both of them. But the pressure is on them to confess, of course, because if they confess and the other doesn't, they will go free and their partner, prisoner B in this case, or prisoner A in this case, will take the full 10-year penalty. If they both confess, they'll split the 10-year penalty. So the ideal situation for both prisoners as a partnership, the two of them together, is to stay silent. They'll both incur only a one-year prison sentence. But the pressure on them is to confess because the likelihood of one of them confessing and the other not is quite high. And in that case, if they do not confess and the other does, they will spend 10 years in prison. That's a long time to be in prison. Whereas if they confess and the other doesn't, they'll go free for a year. But if they both confess, they'll get five years in prison. The result is that it's safer to confess. There's very possible that by confessing, you'll go off scot-free and your partner will get 10 years. The worst that can happen is you'll have a five-year split between the two of you. Staying silent is the best option for both of them together But the risk, of course, of staying silent is that your partner confesses, your partner defects, and you'll be spending 10 years in prison. Not good. So the whole idea of the prisoner's dilemma is it illustrates the difficulty for two partners to stay in cooperation with one another, to trust one another. And in international relations, this idea, this game, illustrates how difficult it is to maintain a partnership, to maintain cooperation, because incentive structures may present you with a very real possibility that if you commit to a course of action and someone else doesn't, you will incur the full penalty and someone else will benefit. Okay, so that's prisoner's dilemma. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? So the whole idea is that even though two actors might know what the best outcome is, they won't necessarily achieve it because there are issues with respect to trust and issues with respect to how their decisions might interact for them in their own futures. This is obviously not only relevant to arms races, but also it tells us why climate change treaties haven't been signed or haven't been adhered to or why international trade agreements haven't been signed or haven't been respected after they've been signed. Prisoner's Dilemma gives us a really interesting way of explaining many of the outcomes in global politics. I hope you enjoyed this video. Join me again next time.